climb through here. There he is. The big fella. Oh, look, I'm literally sliding through here. Oh, look at him trying to go me. Yes. I don't know if he's got a hole nearby, so I'm gonna have to grab him. Fully committed now. Come on, mate. Oh, I'm in the mangroves now. There's no way this muddy's getting away. All right, there we go. Oh, got him. Just got him by a swimmer there. Come on, mate. Get out of there. Yes. Oh, so deep in the mangroves. I can barely move out here. But take a look at that. After missing all those fish with the bow this morning, it's good to actually get a big mud crab. Oh, I can literally barely move in here. All right. Oh, no. Are you like, oh, I think it's dead. A big sea turtle. No, that's what can happen with these tides, hey. They come all the way up into these mangroves and, oh no, he's alive. Yes, he's still alive. And the creek's just there. But what happens is the tides come up so far all the way to the back of the mangroves up there. And what will happen is when it goes out, see this little channel right here? He would have been up in here looking for food. Now I'm just deciding whether he's okay up here or if I should bring him back to the water because I could potentially get in trouble for it. You're not allowed to handle these animals, but I don't want to let this turtle sit out here. The tide's just gone down and it's a really hot day. He will literally cook in his shell if I leave him out here. Normally there'd be in a bit of water or something. Yeah, so like um, I was walking through the mangroves actually looking for mud crabs and um, there's this turtle and he's, he's probably like 20 meters away from the water green sea turtle and um he's breathing and everything but i think he's just timed the tides wrong because it was one of those little creeks that at high tide there's water in it and yeah, um so he's got himself stuck up there with no water under him yeah so i just like i don't want to get in trouble by grabbing him or whatever do you want me to just pick him up gently and move him down to the water so you put your hand at, at, at the top of the carapace or the top of the shell behind his head there there and one on his, yeah, and one down near his back end there. Yeah. And you'll just lift up that way. Yeah. Okay, so he's up. Is he responding when you're doing that? Yeah, he's responding. He's trying to paddle in the air. Yeah, perfect. And we're just moving him down to this creek. And I'll chuck him just in. Yeah, yeah, here he goes. Okay, mate, I'll move that stick out of the way. So what we're gonna look out for here, Miller, is that when he gets in the water, is there enough water for him to get a bit of a swim up going on there? Or yeah, so like this pool right here is really deep. Oh, here he goes. Oh yeah, he's loving that. What are we watching out for? And what we're gonna look out for is that he actually stays under the water as far as his backside doesn't pop up. Yeah, he's... Thank nah, you thank you so much for that. That was really cool. Okay? See ya. Okay, see you, mate. Bye bye. <laughs> yes. We got her back in the water. That's so cool. Got one. Yep. Yes! Oh, we got one! Yes, first shot with the bow! And we have got ourselves lunch! Yes! Oh my goodness! I was waiting up there for hours! Right, let's quickly 
kill this fish. Hey everyone, so before we go any further, I wanted to tell you about the amazing sponsor that we have in this video, which once again, we're gonna be donating half of that money to different animal organizations closest to my heart. So a huge thanks to Fishing Clash for making this possible. Fishing Clash is a combination of a fishing simulator and an outdoor fish app that is some of the coolest graphics I've ever seen. It gives you the chance to travel around the world and fish in different locations and it's super fun and challenging. It's available for Android and iOS and can be used on your tablet or phone. When you can't fish for real, this is the next best option for sure. You can fish from shore or a boat. You can choose all different rods and lures and catch some huge fish. There are millions of competitors all around the world and you can join competitions and events to develop and test your skills against family and friends. You can also fish some amazing locations like the Amazon River, which is somewhere I've always wanted to fish. Also, it's cool seeing all the species that are actually possible to catch in some of the most amazing fishing spots around the world. So download Fishing Clash and start practicing. Use my gift code Miller Wilson to get a special reward available for new players only. With my gift code, you'll get a three star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power ups and 30 weight power ups to help you catch bigger fish. All this is a total value of $20 and you can get it for free. To redeem your gift code, follow these three simple steps. Only available for new players. Thank you so much. All right, back to the video. I have just spotted a massive emu. This is the second biggest land bird that we have in Australia. These guys are literally dinosaurs. He's just shot through these trees right here. And I'm pretty sure there's a clearing on the other side. Let me get my drone out and I'll get some shots of him. Yeah, look at that. Massive emu. He's just run into this big clearing right now. I'll see how close I can get to him. So cool, just following him around. These guys are literally living dinosaurs. They can be really territorial as well. I've heard stories of people getting their guts ripped open by emus because their feet are literally like daggers, but not something that I have to really worry about out here. Oh, he's facing the camera. Oh, that was, looked like he was going to attack it then. <laughs> Look, I'm so close to... Oh, he's just fully attacked my camera and my drone has disconnected. The screen's fully blank. This large chicken has just attacked my camera. I'm gonna go run through the paddock. It's like 150 meters away to try and get it back. And hopefully it hasn't fully ripped it up or anything. Yes. There we go. I hope that's not broken. Let's bring it back. Look at what we got right down in front of us here. What a way to start the video. So that is a big coastal carpet python. But he's like, there's two massive animals that are following me around. I'm supposed to be scary kind of thing. This would be an old animal. So it's so cool just to share a little experience with him, crawl around right near this beautiful creek system as well. Oh, he's loving that sun, hey? Now the other day I was out at this creek system, I actually found a baby one of these pythons. Not too far from here, it might even be its offspring. And take a look at what happened when I got a bit too close. This in front of us right here, is a juvenile coastal carpet python. And at the moment he's trying to fully take my face off. He does not like it at all. But in his defense, these guys aren't actually aggressive, they're defensive. So although he's probably struck at my face six times in this video already, not once has he actually hit me on the head. But even if he does, like it doesn't hurt at all. Whoa, <laughs> nearly got me. Whoa, <laughs> stop. Oh, you did try to bite my face off the whole time and you're nearly getting to it right there but it's still so cool coming out here, seeing all these snakes, interacting with them and getting them up close to the camera, showing people that they're not actually aggressive and that they're just trying to defend themselves. Oh, why did I have to find this? These things absolutely terrify me. Since we got this spider here, we might as well see me freak out and put it on my face. Oh man, oh man. This is scaring me. I can feel him. Oh, here we go. I think he's sitting right on the back of my neck. Hold up. I'll use my phone to get a video. Oh. oh, how's that? He just jumped right off there. On my hand, crawling up my shoulder. Got no idea where he is. 
you will not believe what just happened. To think that I was about to leave and I was like, you know what, I'll drop one more shrimp down. I just caught a really small bass before. We'll chuck one more shrimp on and see if we can get a 50. <laughs> Oh, we'll try. And they stopped biting for so long, I was like, you know what, I'll drop it down once more, see if we can get anything else. My rod just takes off. Yep, there we go. What's this? Whatever it is, it's a good fish. And the whole time I'm finding it, I'm thinking, oh, this is gonna be another catfish. These catfish tails are so powerful. I wonder if it, hopefully it's not a caddy. It's definitely not an eel. And I get it up right near the boat and it is a huge Australian bass. I'll show you what happened. Oh! 50 centimeter bass. It's massive. It's huge. There's no way. Oh, no. This thing is a dinosaur. Oh my. Oh, I'm shaking. Okay. Come around here, mate. Don't have a net. This thing is massive. It's a 50. All right. Oh, yes. I don't know how good I filmed all that. I was kind of stressing out the whole time. I've caught a massive bass no way are you kidding me oh you're not getting away but my kayak is look at the size of that fish man i know the camera is never going to be able to pick up how big this fish actually is but i'll put up on the screen how big it is and for people who go bass fishing they'll know that this is a big fish i was literally about to give up. This is my second PB that I've caught today. The first one was 44 and I don't have the marks on my kayak big enough to measure this guy so I'll be keen to see what he is when I get home. This has been so cool. I've been wanting to catch a bass like this since I was little and we're gonna let him go right now. Not gonna stress him out too much. Look at the size of that fish. Are you kidding me? Thank you so much for this mate. Gonna make sure he's all good before he swims off but yeah. Look at that, you can't get much better than that. Solo early morning bass fishing mission, two PBs, heaps of fish, and to top it off with this is just, just crazy, man. Oh, yeah, she looks, looks like she might go in a second. Yes, go. We've done it. Are you actually kidding me? Can't get much better than that, hey? Honestly, cannot get much better than that. Fully cut up my finger. After about 45 minutes of walking to get to this creek system that I saw from the top of that big hill, we've actually come here to find out that it's completely dry. We're in a massive drought at the moment. As you can see, these cracks in the dirt down here, no water at all. And I could potentially dig down and find some, but it's gonna expend way too much energy. But the good thing about coming down to this creek is I actually spotted the first animal as soon as I got down here. So if you come over here, it's a little snake that I found up in this tree. Yes. Look at that. Look at him perched up there. So that is a carpet python, but this one is so much different to the ones that we find up on the sunny coast. So I'm pretty sure that this guy is a Murray Darling carpet python. So these animals are actually constrictors. So what they'll do is he'll be hunting around for birds in these trees, small rats, lizards. And what will happen is he'll strike out, coil around him, squeeze all the air out of his prey, and then swallow it whole. Sometimes they can even dislocate their jaw to do so. Yeah, look at the little dude. Just crawling around this tree right here. So the target species wasn't actually this snake. I've always wanted to find a black-headed python out here. So we're still gonna be looking for him, but I'm stoked to find the other species that live out here. He couldn't quite reach to the tree over there, so he's using me as a bit of a 
stepping stone to get there. I was a bit disappointed to come to this creek and not find any water here, but I think this is just a sign telling me to keep going because there's a lot more cool animals out here that I can find, but I'll definitely need to get a drink soon. That is the other thing that is so hard out here. It's not just the heat, it's not just the deadly animals and the vast and dryness, but these flies are trying to get as much moisture as they can. So there can be like 50 flying around your face at any given time, but still worth it to have experiences like this out here in the outback. It's going up over your head again. Where are you going, mate? He's trying to, he sees those branches. I actually here. can't see anything. Yeah. I think I might have found a giant stinging tree. I'm pretty sure this is the species that has microscopic hairs on the leaves and if they get on your skin, the pain can last for months and sometimes even years. But I'm not 100% sure, so I might pick one of the leaves up and see if it stings me. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes, it does sting. Oh yeah, as if I'm actually doing this right now. Why am I happy about that? <laughs> That's proper stinging me right now. All right, once more just for good measure. We'll do one big one on my hand. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, that's definitely getting me right there. So the species of tree that's also out here is called the Gimpy Gimpy, also known as the suicide plant. And it's said to be extremely painful if you get it on your skin. Oh, I just stepped on one as well. And already starting to go red at the moment. That's awesome. It actually does sting you. This is a giant stinging tree. It's massive as well. So walking through the bush like I am, these are things that I have to be aware of, but that pain from that sting right there has gone away almost immediately. So hopefully it doesn't stick around for the next couple months. <laughs> oh, it's a little keelback. There's another species of snake that I haven't found on this island yet. He's just shot back under that tree right there. No way, that's a roughy. That is a rough scale, that's a highly venomous snake. I just walked to the other side of the island to see if there's any snakes over there. I didn't really explore it too much last time I came here. First snake we find is a highly venomous rough scaled snake. I would be in so much trouble if I got bitten by this guy out here. Let's get some shots of the little fella. I'm gonna try something, watch this. Hahaha. <laughs> Look at that. Now, believe it or not, this guy is just as at home in the trees as he is on the ground. So no matter what shelter I build later, it's not gonna be rough scale proof. Out of all the snakes I've found on this island so far, this rough scale right here would have to be the one that I'd love to get bitten by the least. Now, when I first found this snake, you heard me mistake it for a keelback and pretty much everywhere that these rough scales live, there will be keelbacks. They're almost an identical species. The only difference between the two is a keelback is harmless. This guy will kill you. I was checking the footage on my GoPro and make sure it was all good. And I look back up, this snake's like 30 centimeters away from my leg, highly venomous snake. What are you doing? Oh, I can feel him on my leg. Look at that. In moments like that, where you have a split second to either jump back out of the way, I think if I moved, it would have tried to strike or something. He ended up just curling up on my scarf that was on my leg. Just gently move away. There's not much you can do when these snakes come towards you like that. Sorry, mum. I know you're not gonna like that. <laughs> He's a really nice snake though, except do not ever let anything like that happen with venomous snakes in the wild or you will get bitten. I was pretty lucky then. I know you found a nice little place to curl up in there, but this is my scarf. Can't let you have it. All right, yeah. You go, not this way. <laughs> All right, let me get down in the water with him. This is so cool, look at that right there. When my mate told me that he actually found a heap of stonefish in here, I didn't think we'd find one this quick. We'll pick the big fella up. Look that right there that is a saltwater estuary stonefish and that is the most venomous fish in the world oh miller another one is it yeah oh, look at him look at the colors on that one marley and i are literally walking through here barefoot and there's literal landmines just sitting in the shallows right here look he's bearing in right there no way oh my god that is so cool get him up out of there <laughs> wow, look at that. Go chuck him in the fish tank with that other one 
and yeah, start our little collection, see if we can find any more before this tide goes fully out. That is so cool. Can you even see it on the camera? Oh my God, Look. just. And he's got his little spike. That is a spike. Sticking up right there. So you can just see this little landmine sitting down in front of me here. If I reach my hand under and pick him up, oh, he's a big one. He is a massive stonefish. We're gonna go chuck him in this fish tank up here. We actually got three more in it at the moment. But yeah, what an ugly little creature right there. <laughs> that is so cool. And we'll drop him in. All right, everyone. And after hours of searching through these mud flats with my mate and I, we have created the world's deadliest fish tank right down here. And if you come down here, that is four massive stonefish. Some of the biggest stonefish that I've ever seen. Pulled off this little sand flat right here. But yeah, it's just so cool to see them in their natural habitat. <laughs> in a fish tank. <laughs> well, we did, yeah, we did see them in their natural habitat. There we go. So this guy spotted me and he's just jumped off the log. He's making his way down towards the creek. Another big python, that's so cool. What's up, dude? You're okay. This guy's a bit bigger than the last one. Still such a cool snake to see. It's good to see that there's so many out here. Last time I was out here, I found one a little bit bigger than this one. So it's nice to see that they are breeding on this island. Yes. Whoa. You're all good, buddy. Whoa. These guys are defensive. They're not aggressive. They're just trying to defend themselves. Obviously, if I wasn't here, he wouldn't be doing this, so. Fair enough, mate. Fair play. All right, I'll see you later, mate. Let's keep going, see if we can find any more snakes. There's a little dude up in the tree behind me. Oh, did he just try to bite me then? I can't really see. So he was just basking out in the sun here this morning. So we're just gonna see where he goes. I think he's gonna go for a little crawl across the floor right there. Go, mate. This is a little coastal carpet python. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? I'm friend, not food. Just looking right into the eye of the snake right now. I know you don't love me, and I know you're trying to take my face off, but I still love you, mate. Whoa, he just hit me on the hat. He's a bit grumpy with me. I'm gonna let him go. So in this little pool right here, we found a little catfish. It's not legal. I don't even know if I want to eat a catfish in this challenge. But a couple days ago, this creek would have been rushing so hard. We had a heap of rain that came through. And this little fella has obviously got stuck in here. So you know what? We're going to help you out today. You're not going to be dinner. We're going to put you back in a bigger pool. I just got to grab you. Oh. Come on, mate. Oh. There we go. All right, we got him. I'll see you later, mate. You're welcome. There he goes. Just off down there. I might try to find a bank or a log or something that I can put my hand under. Or maybe try to catch one with my hands. Just chuck on a heap of bedding now to make it a little bit more comfortable. We've done it. That's pretty cool. I haven't actually sat on it yet though. <laughs> There we go. Hey buddy. Look at you. Big huntsman just sitting on the tip of my hat right now. He's no doubt gonna jump off soon. But not just snakes that are on this island, other species as well. It's pretty funny because I've caught all these 
venomous, deadly snakes that will kill you today and this is the thing that I'm most scared of. Believe it or not, they can actually get as big as like the small dinner plates that we have here in Australia. And I, I'm sure you have dinner plates everywhere, but they're also in Australia. There you go. He's gonna jump off. All right, we're gonna let him be. That's so cool. Going to be a really cool adventure. Hopefully we can catch some fish first up in the morning. So we've got our food sorted. And then yeah, just go from there, see what animals we can find and explore this awesome dam right here. Chuck one of these shrimp on, just like that. There we go. Oh. Yep. That's a good one. First fish of the morning. And we'll see what it is. I'm hoping it's a big bass. Oh. I wasn't hoping it was that. <laughs> that is a big caddy. All right, you come in the boat. I don't want you to scare away any other fish. That's so cool. All right, we're not gonna eat this guy. Although we are doing a survival video, I wanna get something like a bass. And I know that there's more bass in there. See you later. This tree here and this one over here look pretty good to set my hammock up in. I reckon I'll give it a go. This should be pretty interesting. I'll have to tie this kayak on overnight. I'm gonna tie it onto my foot right now. Oh. <laughs> you kidding? No. Well, there we go. This is where I'm gonna be sleeping tonight. We'll get comfy. I mean, honestly, not too bad. We're over a massive waterway. There's no way that any wild dogs or anything will be able to get me here. Maybe a couple crocodiles or something, but should be right. I can tie my kayak right there. It can just float around throughout the night. All right, so we've caught food. We have found a couple snakes, but I want to show you the real reason why I call this place Snake Island. I know there's more snakes here. I'm going to finish off this fish, stay in the shade till then, and hopefully the rain brings out some more snakes. Literally look at this right now. The water levels are rising so much. Over there is the other side of the island. And I'll show you the creek. There is no way that I'm gonna be able to get back across that. So I guess we're actually stuck here for the next 24 hours or maybe even longer. We'll see how long it takes for this creek to go down. We literally just got out here and a flash flood has just come through this area. Yeah, look at that. A little brown tree snake trapped in these flood waters. This is, oh, there he goes in the water. Someone over there. Let's follow him. This place was literally dry like five minutes ago. Yeah, here we go. Another brown tree snake. Let me get some footage of him. Mate, that tree snake has just shot down that hole right there. I reckon that by the rate that this creek's rising, within about 20 minutes or so, that'll be underwater. So many animals getting caught in this flash flood right here. 
10 minutes ago, I would have been standing on dry land right here. It's come up so much. And you know what this means? This means there's so much rain upstream. And I honestly think we're going to get hit by it soon. If all this is getting pushed down, that means a big storm's on its way. Venomous snakes literally everywhere. That's the second brown tree snake we've seen. Snake Island is really living up to its name. So these tree snakes are not only rear fanged, but they have grooved fangs as well. So what that means is the venom doesn't inject like a hypodermic needle. The venom actually runs down the back of the fang and into the bite site where it's punctured. And I know people who have actually been saved by this. Let's say they've been walking with jeans on, get bitten by a highly venomous snake, but the venom hasn't actually injected because it's just soaked up in the jeans. Whereas hollow tooth fangs work like a hypodermic needle, but luckily these guys don't have that. I cannot believe we actually finally found one. I've been looking for this species for so long, so it's cool to get one up close to the camera. So this guy right in front of me here is known as the angle-headed dragon or southern forest dragon. And they are a very hard species to find. So to get one on camera in a video like this is actually so cool to me. And you can see why they're so hard to find. Not only are they incredibly camouflaged, some of the most beautifully colored lizards that we have here, but also they're not a species that tends to run away like the water dragons that they get mistaken by. What they'll do is they'll sit on little trees like this, normally about five foot off the ground, and when they see something that could be potentially dangerous to them, they'll shimmy around the other side. So literally all you're seeing is this lizard's legs and sometimes tail sticking out. And I knew that they were in this area, so if I wasn't looking for them, no way would I see this little guy sitting on the tree right there. And they're feeding on all the bugs, centipedes, after it rains, big earthworms that come out. Say they see a cricket on the floor, they'll spot it from the tree, jump off their little throne, go down and eat it and climb back up afterwards. Absolutely beautiful color. Oh, he's just jumped up on my hat right now. Look at that. Little angle-headed dragon on my head. The little dude jumped off the tree and is now sitting on the top of my head. Wow, look at you. You can now really see his beautiful colorations, hey. I need to get you off in a minute. I know, but you gotta get off me and get back on the tree. Yes, we got one. Oh, I've been walking out here for about half an hour already, have not seen any snakes, and this is the first black-headed python that I've ever found in the wild. This is the species that we came out to this area to find. I knew they were out here. Now this guy isn't actually too big for a black-headed python. It's probably just over a meter long, but these guys can get way bigger. This could be a little male. The females have been known to grow well up over three meters long and they're just massive. So what I find fascinating about this snake in particular is just the design of its body and the colorations on this snake. So you can see he's got a jet black head. It's literally like it's been dipped in oil. And the reason why these snakes are colored like that is black is the color that absorbs the most heat. Since these guys are cold blooded and do still have to warm up for the day, they can literally just stick their head out of the hollow and disperse the heat throughout their body. It's about eight o'clock at the moment and it's already like 30 degrees. So this guy's absolutely loving it out here. Since they live in such hot climates, they have to eat more because they digest their food quicker. But this is really amazing to me because this is a snake that I've wanted to find since I was little and this is the first one that we've ever found. Yeah, I'm right here. You can sense me, come in here. Not gonna do me any damage. These guys have got no fangs, ooh, no venom, but as you can see, gets a bit defensive, but he's just trying to go about his night. So yeah, she's just crawled up this tree right here, but we're going to let the little girl go. Keep walking around and see if we can find any other snakes tonight. This is just proof that they're out, but yeah, that was such a cool experience. So glad that I got to film it in this video. Alright, see you later, big girl.
This creek system is filled with fish. It's a little bit harder now that it's flooded to actually catch them, but I'm gonna use this to my advantage. So I've been seeing spangled perch swimming down these rapids through a couple little sections. So I thought what I'd do is make a primitive fish trap, try to catch a couple and cook them up. I'm actually stacking rocks up into a circular formation to make a bit of a pool at the end. And then as it gets its name, I'm gonna make a funnel that goes from the main pool down into it. And I'm gonna try to scare some fish into it. We'll see if we can get a few. Yes! Spangled perch, baby! Put him there, yes! Good fish. There was like four more that I scared that didn't go in there as well. There we go. He's in there. Look. One and two. Big spangled perch. Oh, look at that big one just got out. There we go. Oh, yes, that's a big one. Look at that. That is a big spangled perch. Let's try get one or two more. There we go. Fish right there. I think that's one up there. Yeah, I think that's one up there. Look, all the mud's getting stirred up. Yep. It's a muddy, and I think that could be legal. If it's a male, oh, this guy's gonna be hard to catch. We can't let him get out there, or it's over. Am I gonna need a stick? I might need my hat. This is our chance to get dinner. Look at that. Going for the hat. All right, if that's my finger, he could potentially take that off, so we got to be careful, but if we can get him, I reckon he's legal. There we go. There we go. And we got one. He's got my hat, but we got him right there. It is a big male, isn't it? Yes. You can tell by how big the claws are. Oh, all right. And that right there is going to be our breakfast. He's going to go for a climb. So am I. <sighs> Mate, you're not the only one who can climb around here. Look at that. Wow. Hey dude. You're a beautiful looking snake. And this is what it's all about, hey, just getting out here, finding all these animals, going on a crazy adventure. You're a beautiful snake, look at that. Trying to stretch his limb out. Wow. No way. They've got that much core power. Hey, bud. Yeah, that's a face. You don't want to buy me on it. These guys are one of the coolest species of frogs that we have out here in Australia. This guy's eyeing off my camera. I don't think I can let you jump on it, mate. Oh. Well, I guess I got no choice <laughs> because he's sitting on top of it right now. Now, the amazing thing about this species right here is generally they feed on bugs, worms, small insects and stuff. But believe it or not, when these guys get big, they have even been known to take on and eat snakes. There's this pretty popular photo going around of one of these frogs eating the second most venomous snake in the world, the Eastern Brown. It's pretty funny. So generally, these guys are a bit of a nocturnal species coming out at night after big storms. You'll often see them on roads. Sometimes Sometimes they can get hit by cars because they're not a very fast moving animal. They won't get out of the way. And I've just spotted up in this tree over here, another species. Oh, he's looking at me. Stay there, mate. Oh, look at that. He's slowly positioning himself on the other side of the tree. We'll sneak up to him and hopefully he stays there. But this little fella on this tree right here is a bearded dragon. Yes, I think that's the first one I've ever filmed before. These guys have such good camouflage. Literally, if you weren't looking, you'd walk right past him, hey. So at first, I actually thought this guy was a frill neck lizard, which is another amazing species that we have here. But I'm stoked to see a bearded dragon. When you come over to these places like this and actually walk through the bush, you start to find amazing animals. Oh, no way. 
Look at him, the little fella's jumped on my head. Now this guy was actually sitting in the shade and the funny thing about that is these animals, all lizards and reptiles, are cold blooded and they need sun to heat up and actually function. But it is so hot in Australia that this guy was just sitting up in the shade right there, probably looking for some little bugs and insects to feed on, some hats to jump on. The mangroves are about 100 meters over that way. So what we're gonna do now, get this little fella off my head, head there and try to catch some breakfast. All right, so I'm just gonna gently grab him. Yeah. Grab onto that body. There you go. Put you back down on your log. All right, and we got another snake right there. Would you take a look at that? That guy sitting in the tree right there is the highly venomous Stevens banded snake. We got one, that is so cool. I knew they were out in this area. I'd never seen one here before though. So to find one on this little rainforest island is so cool. If I got bitten out here, would I make it to the hospital in time? There's always a chance, but trust me, you wouldn't be in a good way. The venom from this snake will actually make your blood clot. So I cannot afford to get bitten by this snake tonight. Oh look, starting to pour down. This snake would have 20 or 30 little burrows, hollow trees around this area that it'll go and sleep in throughout the year. And sometimes they'll even stay in these hollow trees and logs for up to five months over the colder months of the year. And it's pretty funny saying that they look like a tiger snake because currently there's been no anti-venom derived from this species. So if you were to get bitten by a Stevens banded snake, they'd actually give you tiger snake venom. Here he goes. Oh, drop down here. Come on, mate, you can go. Make a run for it. And that was so cool. We found so many snakes today. All right, we're gonna let this little fella be and keep looking for more snakes. Let's go. All right, we found the first snake and it is a venomous one. I think this was actually the first snake we found last time we came to the island as well. This just down in front of me here is a golden crown snake. They're primarily a nocturnal species, but it's not too uncommon to see them basking in the sun in the day. No biting, all right? No biting. Oh, look at that. I think he's just trying to get to a bit of cover behind me. Hey, buddy. You can see him flicking his tongue out. Just sussing out the situation, seeing what's going on. Pretty cool little guys though. Like, is that a way over to the bush over there, over my arm? Yeah, it is, mate. So I've been walking up this creek for about two hours now. We're about an hour away from that massive waterfall that we're aiming to get to. All the scenery up here is just so magical. Massive creeks snaking through the Australian rainforest, literally nothing better. The fact that I can confidently drink out of this creek says something to how clean this water is. But yeah, we gotta get up that waterfall now. Well, we made it. That was way harder than it needed to be. So slippery. Wow. No way. Oh, it's so good to be back. And this is where we're gonna be staying for the next 24 hours. All right. Look at that.
Right. And would you take a look at this beautiful fella right down in front of us right here. So this is the Bandy Bandy, also known as the Hoop Snake. And I'm so stoked that I can actually find one because the funny fact about this guy is not only are these one of my favorite snakes, but I actually designed my Miller Wilson merch after them. That stuff that's on my website, that snake logo, is one of these Bandy Bandies, which is so cool. Now there are six species of Bandy Bandies that live here in Australia. This one's just found on the east coast and recently in 2018 there was actually another species discovered up in the cape up north. Why I feel so blessed about finding this snake is these guys spend 90% of their life underground and they only feed on blind snakes which also only feed on ant larvae. Which really gets you thinking if one of those species was to have a decline in population it would affect a whole bunch of other species. Now. It's actually starting to rain a bit at the moment, which is why we found this guy. They normally come up out of the ground on rainy nights. You might see them on the road and stuff, but I just think these guys are the coolest snake. Now, they are venomous, but they're definitely not venomous enough to affect a human. They're very reluctant to bite and everything. Oh, you're amazing. Look at that. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful species of snake this is. All right, he's going for a bit of a crawl. Let's follow him and I'll teach you a bit more about him. Oh, that is so cool. Hey, bud. Where are you going? Off to hunt some blind snakes. This is a nice size one as well. All right, let's go. So this is the reason right here why they're called a hoop snake. They'll put themselves up into these massive hoops to hopefully scare away predators and maybe he's a bit clumsy. If the predator really was going to attack this snake, maybe it would hit a part of the body that's not as important as the head. So that's the reason why they put this little hoop up just like that. As you can see, he's moving and he's still got it up, which is pretty cool. That's so awesome. I kind of want to see him dig back into the ground. I've always wanted to film that. So, fingers crossed, let's keep following him and see where he goes. There's something crawling on my leg right now. And I need to find my torch, where is it? No way! Look at that! That is a little brown tree snake curled up right there. I was literally laying here and I felt something crawl on my leg. And this little brown tree snake, which is venomous but only mildly venomous, is a real small one just came up to say hi to me. Now I'm glad that wasn't something highly venomous because that could have been really bad. Look where it curled up as well. Yeah. I'm gonna put you in this tree up here. There you go. That's where you belong, not on my shelter. Ugh. Probably look pretty rough. I think it's about 12 o'clock at the moment. I still haven't got to sleep yet. Just felt something crawling on my leg, looked down and it's a little brown tree snake. Probably the smallest I've ever seen. Right, hopefully that doesn't happen again. I'm gonna go to sleep this time and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. It's 3.45 in the morning at the moment. Absolutely started pouring down rain. Not a chance I'm getting back to sleep. Everything's pretty soaking wet. So I think the sun's gonna come up in maybe about an hour or so. So I'm just gonna have to wait it out until then. Get up early and head back home. It can't be perfect all the time, but I'm still enjoying it. Something a bit different. I'm really lucky that I built this thatch on top of that, but yeah. Oh, everything's getting soaked, including me. All right. I'll see you guys in an hour or so. So thank you so much for watching this video again today. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you to Fishing Clash for sponsoring it as well. So make sure you go hit the link in the description. Go check out the game and download it. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel recently. I really appreciate all the support and I got a heap more cool videos coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Go follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys next week in the next adventure. Cheers, legends.